Hello, and welcome to a very special Madman Restoration video. Before we get started, I have to explain the history and background of this piece. This piece is usually accredited to the Swedish designer William Hind, but in actuality, it was designed by the Danish designer Jorgen Clausen. Here is an old advertisement showcasing the Swedish goat collection design by William Hinn. There are three noticeable differences between the Hinn and the Clausen. First difference is the Hinn has vertical grain on the front and the Clausen has horizontal grain. Second difference is the Hinn has more of a brown walnut color, whereas the Clausen has a red, amber, slightly brownish tone to it. The third difference is the back of the Hinn is unfinished and stamped, whereas the Clausen is not stamped but has a fully finished back so the piece can float in the middle of a room. Even though Hinn gets the notoriety and credit for the original design, myself and others believe that the horizontal grain, the color, and the back being finished makes the Clausen a better piece. Regardless if it is a Hinn or a Clausen, this dresser can still fetch up to eight to even $12,000. It's pretty rare and an amazing piece. The story of how I ended up with this particular dresser is also pretty interesting. A furniture dealer friend of mine came across a posting for this dresser at 10 o'clock at night. He immediately jumped out of bed, grabbed his keys, got in his truck, and drove to Newark, New Jersey. He arrived in Newark at 11 p.m. and was met by a bunch of shirtless men speaking a different language. My friend was able to identify these men were all speaking Spanish. He brushed off his Spanish and was able to hold a conversation with them. The sellers told him the piece was originally used in their kitchen, but as of lately was kept in a back alley. They instructed my friend to go down the alley to retrieve this holy grail piece. My friend had a choice, trust these complete strangers and walk down that dark alley in the middle of the night in a city he wasn't familiar with, or take the chance and score a piece of a lifetime. Well friends, he went down that dark alley, and when he did, he couldn't believe his eyes. He then paid the owner, grabbed a dresser, and drove straight home. Now let's get to the actual refinishing process. There's no information on this dresser whether it was finished with stain or toner. I will go over my process on what I feel is an authentic schedule for this piece. Overall the condition is very good except for the top where it looks like they left drinks on it. To start I'm going to use my scraper to scrape off the old finish. If you look closely you can see while scraping that the color is still on the piece but I'm just removing the lacquer or probably conversion varnish top coat. This is one piece of evidence that makes me believe this dresser was stained. Now that the piece is stripped, it's time for sanding. In this shot, you can see the significant damage to the top, the water rings, the dents, the scratches that need to be repaired. You can see that the piece still has a lot of color, and when I sand it, more of that color is coming out. I collected the dust from sanding. It may be hard to see on camera, but in person you can see that the dust has a lot of color in it, which is another reason why I believe this piece was stained. Upon further inspection, I found another piece of evidence. On the inside of the drawers, there are smear marks that appear to be stain, not toner, oil, or glaze. Now it's time to create my own stain. To recreate the original color of this dresser, I knew I was going to need a little help. I used the color wheel to help decide what color closest resembled the dresser. I marked my choice with a piece of tape then decided to use the colors raw umber and cordovan. 
I also picked burnt sienna because that color matched the dust from sanding. Here are the three stains I picked, except Mohawk does not carry cordovan anymore, so I replaced it with modern mahogany. Burnt sienna has a burnt orange color to it. Modern mahogany is a very deep maroon color. And raw umber has a very dark brown, almost black tint color to it. All these stains will be used, it just depends how much of each I will need to get the exact color that I want. I use paint sticks as test boards. It's not the best, but it's what I had available and I felt comfortable it would help determine what color I needed. I chose test board number three because I felt it best showcased the orange, brown, reddish tones that were originally in the piece. Now it's time to stain the dresser, which is actually the biggest moment for me at this point. All that hard work and research to determine the color, maybe it'll work, and maybe it'll be wrong. And if it's wrong, I have to sand and start all over. Now it's time to let the piece dry and see how I did. I did not strip the sides of the dresser because I wanted to use them to color match the top. You can see the top and the sides are pretty close if not an exact match. If anything, the top may need a little amber toner that I can spray on later to give it that amber glow. But all in all, I'm very happy with the results. Next, I decided to spray a couple coats of shellac. Because the piece was used in the kitchen, I fear it wasn't taken care of properly. And products like Pledge that contain silicone can make it more difficult to spray your vinyl, sealer, and lacquer top coats, but the shellac provides a protective barrier so the lacquer coats can adhere smoothly. Now it's time to scuff the shellac with 320 grit sandpaper. Remember, the shellac is to help protect against possible silicone contamination. I still need to spray my vinyl sealer coats, which I'm doing now. Now that the vinyl sealer is done, it's time to scuff that with 320 grit sandpaper. Now that I'm happy with the top and it's sealed, it's time to work on the sides. I want a nice flat surface to work with so those back legs are going to have to come off. There are four screws holding each leg on. I have to remove those and then the legs can easily come off. Here is the side stripped and sanded. I will refinish with stain and vinyl sealer just like I did the top. Now it's time to assess the major damage on the top. Anything that can go wrong has gone wrong. It has scratches against the grain, it has veneer bubbles, it has missing veneer, but that's why I get paid the big bucks. To fill in the dents, I use Bondo Body Filler. I like to tape the outside of the dents so I do not get any unwanted body filler in the pores. This step is probably unnecessary, but I like to do it anyway. Then I sand with 320 grit sandpaper. Next is time to end paint. These are all the colors I use to match the color of the dresser. In the future, I will make a video that goes over in painting in more detail. 
I start by mixing the pigment powders on a painter's palette and spray with blush retarder. In painting is a very tedious process. I start by trying to match with the lightest color that I see in the wood, then try to mimic the natural wood grain. The goal of in painting is to not have the eyes drawn to the repaired area like it was before. It's never going to be absolutely perfect, but you try your best. What made this in painting especially hard is that I know I wasn't going to use any toner or glaze to blend it in, so my in painting had to really be spot on. Hopefully in this time lapse you can see the repair blend in with the rest of the dresser. To give it that warm glow aged look, I sprayed Amber Ultra Classic Toner. Now that the necessary repairs are done, it's time to top coat with lacquer. The ratio of lacquer to lacquer thinner is 70-30 with a splash of blush retarder. However, I forgot to film spraying my lacquer top coat, but it's the same as spraying vinyl sealer. Now there's nothing left but to reveal the finished piece. This was the area that had the most damage, but as you can see, I did a pretty good job at disguising it. I am extremely happy how this piece came out. Even with little information, I was able to use my problem solving skills and knowledge to give this piece an authentic refinish. And whoever the next owner of this piece is, I guarantee they will love it. Please subscribe and like this video and follow my Instagram for more mid-century modern restorations.